Ah, okay. So, third year participants, guests, as well as our IALTA board members and officers, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Whatever you may be, I hope you're all doing well and you're having a great time. So, for today's global collaboration, we are very thankful for giving us a bit of your time and for, be, for having your presence right here. But before we move on to the actual highlight of our program, let us first have an opening remarks from our IALTA president, Dr. Neil Arevalo Alcantara. Dr. Neil, everyone let us give him a round of virtual applause. So I believe Dr. Neil is attending an equally important meeting as of the moment. So let us now move on to an inspirational message from our Philippine Ambassador of IALTA, Sir Reynald C. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Am I audible? Can, can you hear me? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So Loud good evening, clear. everyone. Thank you um, for, of course, uh, participating in this activity. You know, the Philippines and Indonesia geographically are almost the same. We have a lot of islands. We are located in different um, islands here in the Philippines. And just like you, we also have um, a lot of um, common things to share with in terms of culture. Um, and so this is also a good opportunity still for us to exchange, not just the differences that we have, but to share something that we have in common. You know, one of the 21st century skills that we have to highlight is collaboration. And another is communication. You know, this these um, 21st century skills will give us an opportunity to become more globally competitive and at par with the rest of the world. When you communicate with other cultures, you become adept and you become aware of cultural sensitivity in communication. So it is best that you expose yourself to such kind of activity as often as you can, because this will also train you. Because in the global arena, of course, we'll be dealing with not just fellow uh, nationalities, but we will work with people globally. But globalization is not just when you go out of your country. You also have what we call as global, globally local. So this, 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 this is the time when um, international people or international um not really dignitaries, but uh, nationalities would come into our country and establish their work area within the, within the parameters of our country. But still, we have to be able to be aware of what globalization and being globalized is. And so, my dear students, take this opportunity to practice. Of course, that you're, you're discussing with, um, I think you have the same age level, so it would be more comfortable for you to discuss with one another. So grab this opportunity. Take advantage of this opportunity because there is still room for improvement if ever you commit an error. And like when you are working, of course, um, it would have an impact on how we perform with our work. But here, when you commit an error, your teachers, teacher Pahar, Teacher Brian will be there to correct you, will be there to coach you. You know, <clears throat> one of the best skills that you, you would have um, as a globalized citizen is when you learn how to learn and when you are open to coaching. Because in the workplace, it doesn't mean that you're already a graduate, you will not be receiving any feedback or what, but you will be receiving coaching instead. Whether you accept or not that coaching, it will be part of your training. So as young as you are right now, learn to, to accept uh, criticism, learn to accept errors, because through these errors, through these failures, you will also learn what is best. And so um, I will not take much of your time. I'd like to welcome everyone. Um, continue to embrace lifelong learning in your respective fields, in your respective endeavors. I, I think I'm I'm in front of high school students. You all look very, very young. Even your teachers look so young. 
if if they did not put teacher in front of their name, I would look like uh, uh, an old teacher already. So they they look very young. They're very youthful. Take advantage of that because the age gap between you and your teachers is very very small, very very low. So it's easier for them to relate with you, and it would be easier to feel comfortable for you with them. So take advantage of that. Ask for their opinion. Allow them to coach you and continue to collaborate. Don't get tired. I know that it's already after office hours or school hours, but enjoy the process. Okay? So with that, welcome. And of course, thank you for joining. And of course, congratulations to Teacher Fahar or Fajar and to Sir Teacher Brian. Congratulations on continuously sustaining this um, activity for our students. This is not for us. This is not for the teachers. This is for you. We are establishing networks not for ourselves, but for our students. So please value these efforts because when you grow old, when you become professionals, you will look back. Oh, I have this opportunity to communicate with interna the international community through my teachers. And so, of course, to Teacher Pahar and to Teacher Bryant, Happy World Teachers Day. I know it was on October 5, but then again, belated. And thank you for continuously inspiring our students, not just to learn, but to be global. So again, thank you and good luck on your endeavors. I hope that this is not the first and the last, or this is just a few of the many more activities that you will be engaging in. So good evening. I hope you all have a meaningful learning experience. Thank you, and I hope I've earned the privilege of your time. Thank you for that rich and such heartfelt message, Sir Reynolds C. Again, can we give him a round of virtual applause, everyone, for such a great message, thank actually. You, you. I've really learned a lot from that. So let us now move on to the actual highlight of today's program, which is the global collaboration or global co cultural collaboration. So here we talk about the education, history, and culture of different countries. And our for third collaboration will be, we are joined here today by the wonderful and majestic country of Indonesia, as well as the Philippines, to talk about their certain history of their respective countries. So without further ado, let us now introduce the speakers for each country. So for the wonderful country of Indonesia, they are all students that came from Pamantakarao, Senior High School 1. So first we have Ms. Singin Jayanti. And next we have Mr. Hendro Amino. And next we have Ms. Annabel Putri Evangelista. And for our Philippine representative, we have from Laguna State Polytechnic University, Los Baños Campus, Ms. Maria May Desengano. So let us now move on to the actual presentation. Everyone, let us give a round of virtual applause to our first presenter, which is Ms. Singin Jayanti. So, Ms. Singin, the floor is already yours. Hello, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity. The first I will introduce myself. My name is Singin Jayanti. You can call me Singin. I am in the 11th grade in high school. I am 15 years old and I am from Indonesia. Today, I will present one of the story of my country, Indonesia, since it will commemorate the day of Tumpah Pemuda in my country, precisely on October 28. So I took the story of Tumpah Pemuda. But before I start the presentation, I will tell you about Tumpah Pemuda. Tumpah Pemuda. The meaning of Sumpah Pemuda. Sumpah Pemuda comes from two words, namely pledge and youth. Pledge means promise and must be kept. Therefore, the Sumpah Pemuda means a promise that must be kept by the youth. The essence of the three contents of the Sumpah Pemuda is to have one homeland, one nation, and uphold a united language. Next, the purpose of the Sumpah Pemuda. The purpose of the Sumpah Pemuda was to arouse the spirit and naturally I'm sorry, and Natalism and Indonesian youth and our Indonesian people to fight 
expel and oppose the colonizers. Next, the role of the Sumpah Pemuda. To the Sumpah Pemuda, the Indonesian people can unite and put aside various ethnic and group interests in order to save an independent Indonesia. The Sumpah Pemuda is also a sign that the role of the youth in the independence of the nation is not small. The history of Sumpah Pemuda dates back to 1908 when the Indonesian people had to the awareness to unite against the colonizers in the country. Since then, various Indonesian youth associations and national movement organizations have been formed in various regions to fight the invaders. The first national movement organization from in Indonesia was Budi Utomo in 1908. Since Budi Utomo was established, various regional youth organizations began to emerge, such as Jong Java, Jong Sumatra Nambun, Jong Ambon, and so on. Over time, larger Organizations were also born, says the Indonesian Association, which later became a political organization. Because there were many youth organizations that emerged, there were also many different ideas. However, they still have the same goal, which is to achieve the ideals of the nation. One way to achieve this unity of opinion was to organize the first youth congress. The purpose of the first youth congress was to arouse the spirit of cooperation between youth organizations. Youth congress first took place from April 30 to May 2, 1926 in Jakarta, which was chaired by Muhammad Chabrani. The results of youth congress first are the first is the ideal of Indonesia become the ideal of all Indonesian youth. The second is that our associations foster the unity of your organizations in a forum. And the last or third is recognizing and shaping the ideals of Indonesian unity. The implementation of the second youth congress was the result of the failure of the first youth congress in 1926. In addition, the thing that encouraged the second youth chorus was the development of open political thinking of the youth driven by various relevant events that occurred. At the initiative of the Indonesian Student Association, or PPPA, the second youth chorus was held on October 27 to 28, 1926. I'm sorry, 1928. The purpose of the second youth chorus was to give birth to the ideals of Indonesian youth, discuss the problems of the Indonesian youth movement, and strengthen awareness of nationality and unity. There were more than 700 people who attended the Second Youth Congress. They came from very diverse organizations and backgrounds. The meeting of the Second Youth Congress ended on 28 October 1928, before 10 p.m. After the meeting was over, the decision of the second youth congress was read out by the chairman to seek approval from the participants. When read out, the congress dedications were referred to as the Ikrar Pemuda, which later became known as the Sumpah Pemuda. Thus, the second youth congress produced the Sumpah Pemuda, which has been commemorated as Youth Sumpah Pemuda Day every October 28 since 1959. Thank you for the listening. And hopefully the presentation I give today can add insight to all of you uh, about one of the stories in Indonesia. Thank you. Thank you for that wonderful presentation, Ms. Singin. So one thing that I can relate to as well, Pino, is the thought that how our countries also unite in order to fight for our to fight our colonizers and to free our country itself. So that is really amazing. And I really love learning about this, about your country as well. So let's now move on to our second presenter. She, he is Mr. Hendro Amino. So, Mr. Hendro Amino, the floor is yours, everyone. Just give him a round of virtual applause.
Okay, thank you. Okay, my presentation is the night is origin of the name Indonesia by Hendro Amino. List of concepts. One, introduce. Two, myself. Three, history of Indonesian names for closing. Next. Introduce. Indonesia, now by the official name of the Republic of Indonesia, or more probably the initial state of the Republic of Indonesia, is an expressive country in Southeast Asia West, is crossed by the equator and is located between the continents of Asia and Ocean Southeast, now as the transcontinental country. As well as between the Pacific Ocean and the Indian Ocean. Indonesia is the 40th largest country and the largest asplegi country in the world, as well as the country with the sixth most Iceland in the world. Okay. Number two, myself. Hello, I'm Hendra Amino. You can call me Hendra. I'm 18 years old. I like dance, hip of dance, and writing a drama. Apart from that, I like particip sorry, participating in sport activities. I'm grade 12, student of STMAN 1 Pematang Karal. It's Barito, Central Kalimantan, Indonesia. Nice to meet you guys. Number three, the story of Indonesian name. The history of the origin of this country using the name Indonesia is started in the article title about the name Indonesia in the book Muhammad Hatta, Politics, Nationality, Economy, 1927 in 1977. It started with the Thai royal government, which used Use the name Netherlands India or Guides India for Indonesia during colonial years, or starting in 1602 and interpret, sorry, interspread with the British, British and Japanese colonization. The name Indonesia is effort in 1000. 850 in an annual scientific magazine journal of the Indian Archipelago and Eastern Asia or GIAER published in Singapore. The inf sorry, inventors were two Englishmen, James Richardson Logan and George Samuel Windows R. At the time, the name India, the name of our region at the time, was often compressed with the names of other places because of this good, often true, that this child's colony needs to be given its own name, or proposed two names. Indonesia or Malayunisia, or himself, because Malayunisia. Meanwhile, Logan chose the name Indonesia later. Logan changes the letter U in the, in the name to O, B Indonesia. The name Indonesia was then popularized by the German ethnologist Edward Christian took his book. Indonesia, other key influence this Malaysian archipelago and the forecast this Austral Asia 1840. In 1924, the use of the name Indonesia began with the publication of the next paper Indonesia Merdeka, belonging to the Indonesia Association. Then the national use 
12 emphasis in the youth third year of 28 October 1928 until finally her country was official named Indonesia to the proclamation of independence on 17 Augustus 1045. Thank you. Thank you as well for that informative presentation about, about how we come to know of the name Indonesia, the name of your country. That is really fascinating how you cited where it really came from about the articles and books where it originated. I really love that. So let us also now move on to our next present presenter, which is Miss Annabel Putri Evangelista. So Miss Annabel. The floor is yours, and everyone can give her a round of virtual applause. Thank you for. Malu nya aku kalau salah aku. So, is my voice clear? Yes. Yes, I guess you're on. we can hear you. Thank you. So here I am. I'm going to present to you the history of Central Borneo, Indonesia. Can you turn the next slide, please? So there are four contents in here. The first one is introduction, and the second one is about me. The third is the history, and the fourth is end of the page. Next. Thank you, teacher. So let me introduce you to Central Borneo. So as you know, Central Borneo is a province of Indonesia. It is one of five provinces in Borneo. The Indonesian part of Borneo is provincial capital is Palangkaraya, which is my homeland. It has 13 regencies and one city. It is founded on 2 July 1955, sorry, 1958, with the highest elevation is Mount Raya. And the main use language in Central Borneo contains Daya, Banjar, and the mother language in English. Next, please. So before I get into the presentation, let me introduce about myself. Hello to everyone. My name is Annabelle Putri, and I'm 16 years old. I live in Indonesia. Right now, I'm in 11th grade and a student of SMA Negeri 1, Palangkaraya. It is nice to meet you. Well, in this presentation, I have my own goals with me presenting my homeland to you. I hope you will know that Central Borneo has its own story and culture also with their education. Before we get into let's rewind session, shall we? In the first half of the 17th century, the Dutch extended their influence in Borneo by a series of threats and fortification agreements with individual states and by interfering in internal disputes, British, in British involvement in the affairs of the Sultanate of Brunei and the British creation of territory eventually led the Dutch to adopt more policy of expansion. By 1863, they had established colonial rule through sporadic persistence continue until 1905. The island was occupied by the Japanese during World War II. World War II, a strong Indonesian independence movement arose in the region after Japan surrendered in 1945. At first, the Dutch attempted to retain control, but Borneo became a part of the Republic of Indonesia in 1949. So, Central Borneo. How it became Central Borneo? Well, since the 18th century, the central region of Borneo and its Dayak inhabitants were ruled by the Muslim Sultanate of Banjar. Following Indonesian independence of after World War II, Dayak tribes demanded a province separate from South Borneo province. How? In 1957, the South Borneo was divided to province Dayak population with greater autonomy. Sorry, also known from the Muslim population in province. But what about now? 
So the population of Borneo is largely ethnic by Malay and Muslim, who lives mostly in a small area. But however, there is also a significant minority of non-Muslim indigenous people collectively called Dai. The next slide, please, please. And this is the age of age. Well, I hope you will know the history of Central Borneo now. And this, I hope this will um, help you to know more about Indonesia. And that's the end of my presentation. Thank you. And sorry if there are any mistakes. Hope you have a great day and goodbye. Thank you very much, Ms. Annabelle, for that wonderful and comprehensive discussion about what Central Borneo is and how it come to be. That is really amazing. I really love that. So for our Philippine representative, let us now welcome Ms. Maria May Besingano for her presentation. Ms. Maria May, the floor is yours. And everyone, please give her a round of virtual applause. Miss Maria May, it's a bit unclear on my side. I'm sorry, I believe Ms. Maria May is having a bit of technical difficulty. So everyone, please uh, wait, wait for a bit as Ms. Maria May fix her presentation. Thank you, everyone. So whilst Ms. Marimi is still fixing her presentation, so how is everyone's experience so far? Is there anything fun you want to share about your experience in the presentation from our dear guest from Indonesia? So you can kindly speak as we wait for Miss Maria Me. Okay, guys. I think I'm good. Am I audible? Ah uh, yes, you're you're audible, Miss Maria Me. Thank you, Mr. Mark. Here I am. Next one, please. 
Sorry for having technical problem. My signal is so weak. My other part. Can anyone hear me? Yes, you're now audible, Miss Maria. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Mark. So this flag here we have for the other new one. Sacrifice and proof. A red sun symbolizes bravery, courage, and patriotism. A white sun symbolizes love. For the anti-quality, the sun representing the sympathy, democracy, and supremacy of the country, and the stars. Represent our major island, which is the Sony Desire and Mindanao. So, this is our map. Uh, the blue one represents the island of Luzon, the yellow and the white one, the outside in black, representing the bias. Uh, and representing the major island of Mindanao. Who discovered the Philippines? It was discovered by Ferdinand Magellan. Portuguese navigator, traveler, the one who discovered and linking the Atlantic Ocean, Greenland, South Africa, and Sierra del Fuego Island. He also the one who discovered Magellan while leading the first globe. So, fun fact about navigator is, uh, it serves as proof of society and is that the world is truly globe or circle and not flat. So he died on April 27, 2021, by the map people of the plains, who is the Lapos Roots. Uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, they have war between. Uh, we have war in uh, in Magellan and Lapu Lapu, Lapu and their troops. Uh, they're fighting uh about Philippines. Hector, so where did the name came from? Here, here is King Philip II, King of Spain. The Philippines. Name came from him as uh, during the Spanish colonization of the island in the 16th century, since Philip was colonized by Spanish in the past 333 years, they, did, they decided that uh, it will be named by uh, Philip. Next poster. So how many years has the Philippines been colonized? The Philippines was colonized by several countries throughout its history. I would mention those three main colonizers that had been Uh, 
ติตั้งแต่I believe Miss Maria Lee is also having another yet yet another technical difficulty. So please, everyone, bear with us. Since I believe there is another typhoon here in the Philippines, that that's why I believe our, our internet connection is a bit uh in shambles right now. So please, thank you for all your patience, and let us wait again for Miss Maria Lee to continue her discussion. I'm so sorry, I'm having. Uh, no worries, Miss Maria Marie. We're glad to have you back. So, let me just leave the uh, page five. Because, uh, first, go ahead and give me. We have the bone with a big bad dog and glory. Again, this really is having technical difficulties. So everyone, bear with us, please. Thank you all for your kind consideration. This is really a great topic about the history of the Philippines. So I hope you all learn about our, our own history since this is also what we are most proud of. Okay, let us wait for Ms. Maria and me to fix her technical difficulties. Hi. Hello, Ms. Maria and me. Hello. Everyone, the shop is still Miss Maria May, but you're audible. Um, about now. <laughs> Bye.
Am I audible, everyone? Yes, you're now audible, Ms. Manimi. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. I really am. So, no worries, no worries. Background of the Philippines. This is Philippines is rich and diverse. Our Catalabo was inhabited by various indigenous peoples long before the arrival of Ferdinand Magellan in 1521. Beginning of Spanish colonialization, they will do more than three centuries that results in the big of our culture, religion, education, and language of Filipino people. They developed a sense of vibrant democratic nation with a diverse culture influenced by its indigenous roots, Spanish heritage, and American challenges, but we continuously grow and progress socially, economically, and politically. So let's proceed to the population. Thank you for that, that wonderful presentation, Ms. Maria May. I really felt the dedication to still kept on going with that presentation despite our internet connection. I really love that. And reading those ano, reading those visuals, it really brought nostalgia to me, especially this is the kinds of lesson that is being ta taught to me as a Filipino as I was growing, especially history. So that feels really great. But our program doesn't end there. We still have our breakout room session where we get to bond with each other to everyone here in this program after this event right now. So during this breakout room session, you are being you are going to introduce yourself and tell us something about your school and you want and you want to share about your country and also tell us your favorite subject and why is it your favorite. So everyone, I hope you all participate and you enjoy this kind of activity that we have here today. So thank you. So how about everyone? Do you want to share something that you knew in that interests you in the discussion that you've had with your peers within this event, uh, within this program that we have? I can respect to break out rooms. Do you have anything you want to share or something? So while waiting, let me um, do a bit of discussing to what we've discussed in our breakout room. So Amelia and uh, I believe roughly, we really had a fruitful discussion. We talked about like how we are and our school, our countries. They even discussed a bit about, about our delicacies. So it was really great. It was a fruitful discussion. So since I believe most of the students are already back at yeah, the everyone is here. meeting room. Everyone is here. Yes. Yeah. So I hope everyone had a fruitful discussion for our, and now for our closing remarks, we have teacher V Octaviani to give us such a wonderful message. Everyone give her a round of virtual applause. Thank you so much, Mark. Uh, am I able? 
Yes, teacher, you are. Okay. Uh, you want to say thank you so much for this great opportunity for this program and for teacher Brian and also students for uh, give us the opportunity joining the program. Thank you, Pajar, for helping me <laughs> so far. And this is like the first the first collaboration for some of my students. So I invite uh, some of my students to join me. Uh, to join the session and I can you can see the background of my students they are at school right now uh, because some of their like they are living in a place that have uh, very, uh, the connection problem is very low so they joining from school and thank you so much for this great opportunity and we hope that we can continue the program and we really love this session. Thank you, Annabelle. Annabelle actually from another uh, town, <laughs> not in from SMA1 from Matangkara. Actually, she's from SMA1 Palangkaraya. It's a different about five hours from my place right now. <laughs> uh, and thank you so much for joining. That is, uh, I really love the presentation that you have given to us. And also, I would like to thank you to uh, where is it? Oh, Singin. Singin. Uh, she's actually Singin is from SMIN1 Buntok. It's actually, it's about uh, half an hour and a uh, half hour from our place right now. <laughs> but she's in our village right now. Uh, different school, but uh, she's very, like, very excited joining the session like, like this. And also, I'm going to so thanks to our student from SMN from Pematang Karao, Hendro. Uh, so confident, I really love it. Uh, but Hendro, you are great. <laughs> Don't just sigh. Uh, thank you so much for give us the great presentation. Actually, it's about Indonesia's history. We have a lot of history, but I I I let them to choose. The history what they want to presenting to all of you and the design they made it all <laughs> alone so i i give them the opportunity to make the design the the, the explanation of the presentation all of them and i really proud of you and i also thank you for teacher brian and student uh, uh maria am i right maria that's really great presentation. We know the history of uh, Philippines. Even the connection is not really good, but we also enjoy and the presentation. We can read it all. And thank you so much. And we can wait to see you again next meeting. Thank you so much. Back to you, Mark. Thank you for that wonderful message, Teacher V. So we really appreciate your, be your whole class and you being here. And also, we are very honored for the kind of effort that you are putting just so you can attend and you can present a great information and knowledge to us here, all of us. We really appreciate all of those. And just a brief announcement before we move on to our pictorial, our photo part. So our second session would be on October 14, 2023. So the, the time or the actual time would, would, still, uh, would be further announced in the actual poster of the event. So now for our photo OP, can I request everyone to please open your cameras so we can have a group photo? Student, open your um, camera, please. Okay. Okay, I'll be taking the photo. So smile, everyone. One, two, three. Okay, another one. One, two, three. Smile, everybody. Okay, great. That's now all. So thank you very much again for being here today and joining us with this global collaboration. We really appreciate the effort and your presence here in general. 
So I hope all of us manage to, all our presenters manage to impart knowledge that would be useful in the near future and in our lives in general. So again, thank you very much. And that ends our collaboration, our global collaboration. So Brian, is there any further announcement that you want to include? Oh, I've... oh thank you so much, Mark. Uh, what I can say is that thank you so much, uh, Teacher Fajar, Teacher V, and also to Teacher Uri, who's not in here attending perhaps an equally important event. And also, we're really honored that Dr. Neil, our IELTA president, is here. And also Dr. Manzur uh, from IELTA Egypt, if I'm not mistaken, or Pakistan, Dr. Manzur, right? I believe Dr. Mansoor from Yalta Pakistan is here as well. So we're really honored to have most of known educators of Yalta here. So thank you. Thank you so much. And I saw a while ago that Teacher Fajar announced that the certificate of participation will be given on the third meeting. So if you wish to have that, kindly complete. So we're we're now waiting for the two sessions. It's only two more sessions, dear students, and you'll have your certificate. And to all the speakers as well, your certificates will be given on the third meeting. So it's like a celebration of learning because there will be lots of speakers, okay, from Indonesia will be given a certificate. And in our country, we apparently we only have three in here. Okay, because this is part of their training. Okay, and uh, yeah, to the three teachers of IELTA Indonesia, thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Neil, you see how they are really dedicated in promoting IELTA here in Asia. So that's it, Mr. Apilado, thank you so much. Thank you so much for that, Sir Brian. And again, we really appreciate everyone's presence here. and. That ends our collaboration for today. We hope you learned something and we hope we imparted something that you can use in your daily life and in your future in general. So thank you everybody and you may now you if you have if you want to. So that ends our our collaboration. Thank you everyone. Uh, thank you so much, guys. Thank you, dear teachers from Indonesia and your fantastic students. Thank, thank you, Dr. Everyone. Neil. Thank you, Dr. Thank Neil, you. Dr. Manso, Dr. Manso, Dr. Manso, Dr. Manso, and all the students. Thank you, Paul. Thank, Thank, Thank you, everyone. 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 Thank you, 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 Thank you,